our dear viewers, I want to welcome you once again to Amazing Worship. We've had a series of recordings about the lesson on the book of Galatians. This time round, we'll be recording Priority of the Promise. And with me here, I have friends who love the Lord, and I will allow them to introduce themselves. I am called Ahimbisiba Michael, and on my extreme right, I have a brother. And I also have a sister here next to me. Auma Sharon Prescavia. And lastly we have and sister. I am Esther Odora. We are all pleased to be part of you and today we'll be discussing priority of the promise. But before we do anything, I'll ask Esther to pray for us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, our holy God, and we are so thankful for the privilege that you've given us to learn more about the priority of the promise. We pray, Lord, and invite the presence of the Holy Spirit here that you give us understanding and knowledge and wisdom. And that also those who will listen and watch, Father Lord God, will gain knowledge and wisdom. We thank you and we have prayed, believing in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, in the way we do our things, we always have priorities. And God, through this lesson, is trying to tell us what is priority, should be, what should be prioritized. And a promise according to the dictionary is in general sense a declaration whether verbal or written made between one person to another which binds the person or makes the person to honor in conscious law to do or to forbear something they have pledged so we're going to look at the promise god made to abraham <clears throat> how is it a priority as compared to his law where does the law of god come in and what are we to hold on to as Christians? Is it our ability to follow God or his sacrifice that he showed on Calvary? And if you're to look through, we also make promises in our day-to-day -day lives. Yes. Esther and uh, SP and Apuli, you've made promises. Apuli, have you kept all your promises? Uh, it's hard. It's, ha it's hard as human beings. And why should we trust God? Why should we trust God that if he makes his promises, he will deliver? Okay, we need to trust God because this is what he proclaims of himself. That surely whatever he says, whatever he proclaims to be, will surely happen. And we've tested him with our own experiences in the past lives. And we've seen that surely whatever he promised, even in the scripture, he has fulfilled it. So for me, basing on that, I think I should trust him. Amen. As according to uh, Genesis, what is the promise that we are talking about here? The promise that we should look forward to that was given to Abraham. When you read the book of Genesis, and uh, you see that God promises Abraham different things at different points in time. But one that we are going to focus on mainly today is the promise of the seed that was to come. And we know and we later learn that that seed was Jesus Christ himself. Amen. Apuli, if you could run to us in Galatians chapter 3 verse 18, our memory text, how is the promise of the inheritance we have in Christ, how should we react to it in terms of the faith we have, and how should our obedience come in at that point? You could read for us that verse. Uh, the verse says, For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. According to the verse, um, we learn that uh, the inheritance, if, if the promises that we have, we are, uh, we are, by, we are to come by the Lord. <clears throat> then the promise that was made earlier was no, of no relevance anymore. Uh, but the verse ends by saying, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. God Amen. gave the inheritance to Abraham by promise. Mm -hmm. Which means uh, God is not entitled to, but because he promised, he's committed to, and uh, and we learn that the law is, um, uh, the law came in after the promise. So it was a way to lead us to the fulfillment of the promise that was given to Abraham. Amen. 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 Yes, yes, yes. I want add on something. When, when you look at the verse saying, for if the inheritance comes by the law, 
no longer comes by the promise. It's important we dwell on that because it means if the promise had come by the law, it would be dependent on Abraham mm. fulfilling the law, the law. And which we know would have been impossible. We can't like so Apollo as witness, yes. we can't keep promises. So we should be glad that mm. this inheritance was by promise, promise. not by law. Amen. Amen. So we can do all things not because we have power, but through Christ who gives us strength. Allow me read uh, Galatians. I, I, I will start from 15 up to 20. It says, Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man denials or adds to it. 16 says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He says not to seeds as of many, but as of one, and that is to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ, the law which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of no effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. 19. Wherefore then serves the law? Paul is asking. It was added because of transgression, until the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator, Moses. Now unto the mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is of one. Lastly, is the law then against the promise of God? God forbid. For if the law had been given, which could have given life, very, verily righteousness should have come by the law. Paul in this verse is bringing a lot of concepts. One, how is man saved? How is man able to tap in the hope of salvation and reaching the inheritance that is through Christ? Is it by what he does according to the law? Is it by the sacrifice of Christ? And how do we all tap into this? Faith comes in, into the question. And I would like to ask, uh, how can a Christian balance law of God, the law of God, as a, in approaching salvation, how can a Christian balance the law of God and faith? Let's speak. Oh, I'd love to answer this from another point of view. What is the law of God that we are talking about? Mm -hmm. The Lord actually helped us with the definition. He tells us the law came because of the sin. The law is actually just a mirror. It's just telling you, you know what, these are the things which you're going to look at and when you reflect on that, you will know whether you have gone astray or not. But then there is this ultimate sacrifice I'm putting out there for you. I'm giving you my son that soever believes. Yeah? The ultimate sacrifice is there for us to accept. We shall not accept it if we don't believe that the sacrifice is there for us. So if you believe and accept it through faith, through the faith that we have, that's when you accept the ultimate sacrifice. There you'll be saved. And now how would the law come in? That was your question. Yes. The law is going to... The, me, my acceptance of the Lord and Christ Jesus, acceptance of his ultimate sacrifice for me through faith, will enable me now to be like, oh, this is what my Lord loves. And I'm not going to hurt his feeling. He loves this and he has put for me a mirror. He's telling me this is my character. So because I love him, I will willingly obey the things. Amen. But he's not telling me that if I obey, I'll automatically be saved. No. He's telling me because I am saved, I'm going to obey. obey. Thank you so much. Now, if the Lord does not save fully, why was it given? Um, I believe, like I said before, that um, one, let, let's first look at a um, mm. promise and then I talk about okay. it. Okay. Uh, in Isaiah 46, 11. Cast calling a revenuous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel for a far country. Isaiah. It says, yeah, it is the one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have spoken it. Mm -hmm. I will also bring it to pass. Mm -hmm. I have purposed it. And I'll also do it. So for the promise, you have nothing to do about it. God has promised you, relax. It will happen. It will happen. Amen. Now, it comes to the law. Your question was, if the law does not save, why was it given? It comes to the law. One, the law was to help us keep in good relationship with the Lord. Mm. 
as we await for the fulfillment of the promise. Right? Yes. Two, the law was meant to help us see ourselves. Are we being good sons of God? Are we being good, uh, good citizens in the kingdom of the Lord? Are we doing the right things? Are we doing the good things? And in so doing, the law is supposed to show us when we are going wrong, when we are transgressing, and when we are doing wrong. That's so true. That was the purpose. Amen. Let's also add on, uh, from a different point of view. So the law shows you that this is how I want you to live, mm, yes. and this is how you should live, like mm. Akuri has explained. And then when we look at the law, now I'm trying to connect it to the promise, which is Christ. Yes. You realize that I cannot keep this law. True, in my own means. In my own means. But there is someone who can enable me to keep that law, and that is Christ. So that is the law ultimately will point us back to the promise which came, which is Christ. And I know now, because of the law, I know that I must depend on Christ who was promised to Abraham to be able to live. Uh, just, just to uh, add on a little thing, yes. you know, when we look at the law right now, we shall all look at Christ. That uh, the law is given to help us look at Christ all the time, to help us fulfill the law, help us be in good terms with the Lord. But then, there's also another reason when you look back by the time when the law was given, that was before Christ. Yes. Mm. Right? And that is the time when the Israelites had just had just left Egypt. Mm. And they had in Egypt they had no choice of living by God or not, uh, may, uh, uh, fulfilling the Sabbath or not, uh, being good people or not. They were going according to what the Egyptians had defined and yes. determined that they have to live and have to believe in. Mm. So the law at that moment was to remind the Israelites that you belong to a different kingdom other than the e Egyptian. Egypt where you you don't belong from. to the world. And the kingdom that you are supposedly to be part of, mm. these are the guidelines that the people in such a kingdom should live by. Amen. Now, speaking to that, Paul points out the fact that the law was given at Sinai. Mm. Where, where, when does the law of God start? Oh. Just Can you try answering that? Yes. Okay. I like it when people think the law of God just happened when it was at Sinai. Mm. I like how God gave the law at Sinai. How the angels were among, how he came in thunder and lightning. The whole experience of how the law was given to Moses. But let's make a reflection. When was sin first known as sin? Was it at Sinai? No. No, definitely not. Because now, if you read Romans 4, 15, it will tell you if there is no, the, if there is no law, then there is no transgression. Yeah? That means, for me, I would know that the law actually, even in heaven, there was the law. Because that's why we see the devil falling out. Mm -hmm. The law was all the way back. But now at Sinai, God is just reminding them that I know you had forgotten all this. Mm -hmm. That's why at some point he uses the words like, remember. Because this is not something he's telling the audience for the first time. He's actually calling to memory. If someone tells you remember, it means something was given to you Before. a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So for me, at Sinai, I just see how God is reminding his people to be like, yes, you've seen all these powerful gods. Yes, you've seen all the things. But I am here to remind you that my relationship with you is based on this. Amen. To add to that, when you, the law comes in in Exodus chapter 20. Mm -hmm. But in Exodus 16, when God is giving the children of Israel manna, he gives them principles of how to obey the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Pick all the days of the week, but on the sixth, pick double, such that you may rest on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Then we also see at the beginning in Genesis chapter 15, verse 1 to 6, when God is calling Abraham, he believed and in him he was counted righteousness. Righteousness is being right. Mm. For you to know right and wrong, there is a principle. Mm. So the principle of right and wrong starts from heaven. Mm. And the law of God points out the fact that God is perfect and he has created us, giving us a principle to follow. Mm. So coming to uh, Mount Sinai where God comes in his magnificence and in his glory, he's trying to show these people, Don't, you have forgotten my principles by dwelling in the land that is hidden but mm. he reminds them in the magnificence and brings to remembrance the principles he loves so much 
Let me also say this. God's promise or covenant to Abraham implies God's will, meaning God's covenant is not a mutual understanding between man and God. It is rather God's thoughts for man. So the will of God or the covenant or the promise given to Abraham, Abraham has nothing to do. When you look in Genesis 12 and even in 15, God tells him, I will do this, this and this. Abraham is not in turn saying, I will also do this and that. Meaning that the promise is given to us, we are supposed to accept it and not do anything to earn it. Mm. Like I want to yes. add something. Mm. When, um, mm. I was all laboring to write so much about the law, the, the promise, the covenant. It brings you back to the times of the Galatians. What exactly were they thinking at that point? That one is more important and than the like other. More? They are putting the, no. the law no. before. The law is more important than what? The promise. Than the promise, yeah. And we need to first define uh, to think more into god's god's promise it was based on his will isn't it mm. that's isn't that true what exactly that's said, true yeah and so that meant that it was unchanging amen just like uh the lesson writer will give you the example that when you write a will and once it is executed it doesn't change, change. so for um, for a galatian and for people of our time to come and say that the law is more important than that promise in other words they are saying that the will of god can be changed, changed. which is not true mm. yeah. Thank you so much for bringing that out. You know, God is a God of order. Him being creator of heaven and earth, he has everything in plan. When you read Revelation 13, 12, it says, Christ, the Lamb of God, was sacrificed from the foundation of the world. Meaning that the promise of a savior that would rescue us from sin was foreordained. So that promise being given to Abraham to pick us out of the sin does not change the fact that God introduces written principle mm. and if Christ has not, had not died, why would we keep the law? Mm. Because without his death, we have no life. Uh, according to Matthew chapter 5, uh, verse 17, if you continue up to 21, mm. Christ himself in his own words points that he has not come to die with the law, mm. but to fulfill. Mm -hmm. And he also emphasizes that whoever breaks these laws, will be least in the kingdom. List doesn't mean you will be a keeper. It means you will not be part mm. of the kingdom. So the law, even when it does not serve, it's a code of conduct for people who have been saved. Uh, Apuli, uh, you know, our God doesn't give us things that are bad in some. Should we believe and just be merry? Okay, he has died, we believe in the sacrifice. Should we just take that upon and live the way we want? Let me first start with uh, the verse you've just mentioned, Matthew mm. 5, uh, 17. 17. I, I like the phrase of, for as long as the heavens and the earth still last. Amen. The law, will, not one title or jot will pass away. Will pass away. Now, but the question comes back to what you have asked. Should we just may remake? After the Lord has said, there's no one, nothing of the law that would be data away. Uh, my, my perspective would be that one, we are expected to do something. We are expected to follow something uh, that will define us as people are following Christ, Amen. as people. What do you do when you're given a promise? When, when your father promises you, my son and daughters, I will leave you with property and land. I will leave you with a house, I will leave you land. And then that time of taking that property or giving you that property comes. What happens? You have to take the property yes. because that was promised to you. Now, when you are taking that property, there are things you follow. There are things you do. You just don't take up the land and demolish it. I mean, a building and demolish it. Mm. You, 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 you just, uh, uh, there are things even if it's your father, you just, if your father left you with a home, you can't just make it a bar. <laughs> So for as long as we are taking in a promise, there are things we have to follow. So it makes me believe that Jesus Christ was a remedy to sin. Amen. But how do we how are we supposed to know that we are sinning? The law points to the, the sin. The law points us to the sin. Mm. And how are we supposed 
how is Jesus supposed to help us not be sinful? Is by helping us uphold the law. Amen. Thank you so much, Apul. Esther, why, why, how can we allow the law point to the sin in our lives? How can we allow that? Because there are principles there, mm. but how should we approach it? How should we approach the law that it points out uh, our a sin? sin. Um, I, I'll first go back to the tendency I, I see in sometimes even in myself, mm. where uh, when I have done wrong, hmm, I have done something wrong, and maybe someone discovers it, I, I, there are two options you usually take. It's either you accept that I have done, you've done wrong mm -hmm. and, and try to remedy that, or you go into defense mode. Mm -hmm. But the way you approach the law of God is out one of love and then out of faith to know that it's too hard for me to keep this law. Yes. Yeah, I cannot keep it on my like, own. I mean, I, it's easy for me not to kill, mm -hmm. but when Jesus says that you have committed adultery, how easy is it? Especially when he uses the example, if you've looked at a woman, lustfully. you have lustfully. You and have murder, he, he again brings yes. in murder's hatred. Yes. Mm -hmm. So on my own, I realize that there are aspects of the law that may be easier for me to keep, but there are those that may not be easier for me to keep, and yet God requires that we must keep all of them. Amen. Yes. So if I cannot keep it on my own, how do I, how then am I able to keep it? By faith, believing that Jesus Christ, who was able to keep it to every iota of it, yeah? mm -hmm. kept it, then I can keep it through him, I can keep it. But the other thing I also wanted to point out is that we tend to confuse that verse when Jesus says, the one I fully explained so ably, is mm -hmm. that um, I have not come to, to what? Do away with to the do, law and the prophets. Do away with the law, but I've come. We see that Jesus at no point did he speak against the law. In fact, he was only speaking against its abuse. So it's it's very wrong of us to sit and say that Jesus in that verse was saying the law was done away with. Mm. And that's why even Paul, if you don't read his writings in context, you may think he's He's saying the law is no longer useful. But he concludes and says, what then should we say that the law is no longer necessary, it's no longer useful? No. And he says it with an emphatic no himself. Yeah. To read the verse you've just read, uh, Romans 7, 7 says, what then shall we say? Is the law sin? Mm -hmm. He says, God forbid. Mm -hmm. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law. Mm -hmm. For I had not known to last except the law said, thou shalt not last. Mm -hmm. In verse 12 he also emphasizes that wherefore the law is holy, the commandment is holy, just, and good. Now, we are sinners. We cannot do anything on our own. And God has promised a savior. God, through Abraham, has promised the seed, which is Christ, to come and save us. How am I supposed to hold on to this promise and be part of them that will overcome sin? Uh, before I, I answer that, I would have to, to just supplement by adding another verse on, still it is from Romans, mm. Romans 3 and verse 31. It says, Do we then nullify the law by, by this faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. The law. Mm. And then, uh, just before that, in verse 20, it's like, Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in the sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. I, when I read the scripture, I was, I was humbled. I'm like, okay, so I become conscious of my sin by looking at the law. When someone tells me the law was nailed at the cross, and the scripture is telling me I'll become conscious by it, what was nailed at the cross? Because uh, I'm reminded that these Galatians, they had these ceremonial laws. Wash your hand up to here. Do this. You will not walk these miles on Sabbath. You will not do this and this. And now then they are these. Thou shall not. The moral laws. And if the moral laws are pointing me to my sin, who am I to neglect their power? I will not know my sin if the law is actually there. Uh, there is something I loved, I liked so much when the lesson writer said um, that the law is just like a magnifying glass going to help you see clearly. It's, going to, it's not going to add anything, but it's going to bring the things which you are not able to see clearly now, they are going to be more visible. When a scientist is looking at a germ on the microscope, they will not see it with their naked eye, but when they put the right lens in, they will be able to see the exact spot or the exact germ they are looking for. 
So now back to your question, how would I how do I take that gift? We all love John 3:16. Mm. It's a favorite verse for many. It's true. And I like the simplicity of which God brings it. Whosoever believes. believes. So if you believe that Christ is your savior, that calmness that comes with it, that's the first step you're taking. You're acknowledging I cannot save myself. There is someone else to save me. And this is only Christ. Amen. And when I believe that word that Christ is my savior, now what am I going to I'll be accept it by my faith. That's I'll true. come in his shield. And they say when you when you accept Christ, the, the Holy Spirit is given to you and is going to mold you. It's going to shape you. The things you enjoyed some time back, you may no longer have the taste for them, the desire for them. Not because you've changed, like you're not the same person. You are the same person. But there is a transforming power in you. So just to summarize, I'd be like, sure, you believe that that is your promise. You accept it by faith. Thank you very much. If I visited any of you and you served food, mm -hmm. I can t smell it and it's nice, it's already on the table. Mm -hmm. But that food will not enter my mouth sure. unless I eat it. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I have seen it, we have seen God work <coughs> miraculously. Mm -hmm. All through the promise he made to Abraham, making him a great nation, blessing whoever that blesses him, cursing whoever that curses him, all that has fulfilled. So looking at the past record of God, we have no doubt that the promise which he promised of Christ coming, mm. and he did come. Therefore, the coming of Christ is the avenue be through which we are saved. So the promise is key and its priority in terms of our salvation that had Christ not come, there would be no life. Mm. And how do we tap in that life? We believe on the sacrifice of Christ. Mm. That by faith, his death becomes ours. Our sin, he takes away. Mm -hmm. And therefore, now that he has taken away the sin, and sin being the transgression of God's law. Therefore, he brings us out of evil into obedience and upholding the law. So, faith, prayer is the key in the hands of faith to unlock all heaven's blessings, mm -hmm. and chief of them being us inheriting the kingdom of God. Esther, you had something. Uh, I, I'm just going to draw back a little to when SP spoke about the moral law. And um, I wanted to emphasize something on the other law, which is the ceremonial, ceremonial. law. In fact, some commentators are, are divided into the ceremonial law and then the, the civil law, mm. which will things to do with you, how to lend to someone, those are the civil laws, how to execute mm. justice and all that. Yes, those laws could have been done away with, like in the sense that I do not have to now probably uh, wash myself in a certain way to be that the principle behind them still remains it's eternal. because the principle behind those ceremonial laws and the civil laws was to teach the children of Israel and to teach us today spiritual Israel how to worship our holy God mm -hmm. and that's the principle behind it that's and that's the principle we adopt so the lo those ceremonial laws could have been done away but the principle still remains I still want to know how to worship my God in the right way that's true yes. that's true uh, that, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, from uh, both, uh, with all these submissions. Mm -hmm. uh, we learned that the promise is uh, takes precedent over the law. Mm -hmm. That's true. It takes me back to the example you gave of food. If I am invited to feast in your house, the invitation takes precedent Before over the guidelines of how I'm going to eat that food mm -hmm. and where I'm going to eat that food. That's mm -hmm. true. Now, that takes me back to what the, uh, the writer ties to the first place. Mm -hmm. And to me, I'll summarize it that God has given us a promise, an invitation to heaven, and it's a promise. But how are we going to go to heaven? There's someone who is going to pick us. Mm -hmm. It's Christ. And that is Christ. Mm -hmm. But how are we going to accept Christ? That is by having faith mm -hmm. in Christ. Amen. But I would like to talk to a person who believes that it's only by, by accepting the promise that I get to heaven. One, what's in heaven? Why are you sat and down? In heaven there is righteousness there's and righteousness. the devil yes. is just because of sin. Yes. Obedience. Obedience and God is a good organization. Yes. Okay. Now, if he is preparing you 
to take you to where he promised you to go. Right? And he doesn't give you guidelines of how you can prepare yourself. Mm. What if that, the same thing happens? Mm. We find lawlessness there because we, we just take murderers. Mm. We just take thieves. We just take what? Sabbath breakers. Everyone All should things. go. What will happen in heaven? But apart from that, people should use, we should be able to use our common sense, our knowledge and intelligence that God has blessed unto us and ask ourselves, imagine we say, we have a promise and it has been fulfilled and so we shall go to heaven by all means. And everyone in the morning, you get annoyed, you kill. Uh, you want something, you steal. So yeah. no longer be How heaven. will this world, shall we even reach the time of going, of, to, heaven. Of going to heaven? No. Mm-hmm. Yes, that, those are the things that we need to think that's about. True. And that's what the writer is trying to yes. understand. Amen. And I just want to say that we had a discussion on our way here with, uh, with SP. And I was, I, I, I posed the question can, because the promise was based on God's will. That's true. And we can see the writer is emphasizing and writing that the promise is more priority to. Uh, no. to the law itself. Mm. But I asked, can God promise anything that is outside of his law? It can never. He exactly. doesn't contradict. So it is sad that uh, the Galatians had put Paul in such a position where he has to show which one is higher than the other. Mm. And it's sad that we also do the same thing today. Very but in essence, you find that they are actually intertwined. That's true. Yes. God will not promise and will not will anything that is outside of his law. Yes, but the promise is still priority, Amen. but it does not annul the law itself. Neither does the law annul the promise. Yes. I don't know if that makes sense. A lot of <laughs> sense. <laughs> to emphasize that, what the promise really, like we've been saying, let me out bring it out here. The promise that Abraham was holding on to is Christ himself mm-hmm. coming to die and save us from sin. Now, if Christ, if the will of God is to save us from sin, it's literally his will to help us uphold the law. So the two do not separate themselves. So if Christ, the lamb that takes away the sins of the world, takes away the sin by his death, what does he leave around? Principles of righteousness, the holy law of God. So the promise does not annul, but rather the approach is what was the problem here. Like very many of us, we cannot work our way to heaven. But after we've accepted the work of Christ, that is his death, we are reckoned righteous. And what we should hold key in our lives is the promise or the death of Jesus Christ. And by that sacrifice, we have eternal life. Sure. That is sure. Mm. But now, after like Apuli has said, you've been invited, whoever believes. Mm. After we've believed, what will happen? Now there comes in that if Christ has called us, has died to bring us out of sin. When we believe, we work with him to come out of sin, and that is to uphold the law. Um, yes, sir. Michael, there's something that is amazing. So every time I, I look into this, it reminds me of something. You know the promise comes from God. That's true. And it is a one-way thing. God is telling Abraham, I will do this, this, and this. That. So it's not about Abraham. It's about God's character. Yeah, it's like if I if I I'm not sure about you so much, but then I just come and tell you, you know what? I will do for you this, this, and this. the The point is, it is me now to prove that I'll keep my word. Mm. It's not about you. For you, you're willing to accept it. You're ready to receive it. You're ready to do to to uphold that promise which I've given to you. And now this is what is happening to God. God is promising Abraham, and it's upon now God to keep it. But I like how he says it. Let's read uh, Hebrews, Hebrews 6, 18 and 19. When we read it there, we see God has an unchanging character. Michael, you could read for us. Hebrews 6, 18 says that, 18 says, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, mm-hmm. we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us sure. which hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast which entereth into that which sorry which entereth into that within the veil sure we see that god is giving uh, giving abraham the promise actually the promise is up to us now to choose christ yeah 
they've given us the ultimate sacrifice and he's telling us here is my son sacrifice for your sin so it's upon us to choose to accept that he has proved his character because he's unchanging he's given us this and he has affirmed his character you know what whatever i say to you whatever promise i make i uphold so it is now unto you to accept that which i have given and i think that is amazing yes yes uh, SPS thank you so much something in my mind uh, god makes this promise he appears to abraham and says i'm going to do this and this for you i'm wondering why would abraham believe in god mm-hmm. why the, if SP came and told me that you know what Esther, I'm going to buy an airplane for you, I will say Nedda, you <laughs> lie, that's SP. A lie. because I know SP's circumstances. That's <laughs> true. Yes, and He's unless it takes a survive. miracle of God. <laughs> so when she tells us going to buy a bicycle, <laughs> that, that I may accept. Yes. But God made very grand promises to Abraham. Mm. I'm going to prom- I'm going to give you a, a, a son. Abraham had never had a son. And he's fact, way old. Yeah, and even when you look at read at Genesis 15, 15. 18, you he says is is it going to be this one my servant's son? Son oh yeah. you're going to give me my sure one. God Seeing that Abraham I have... tells him leave your father's land mm. at that old age. 75 years. So, and then Abraham moves at 75 years. If you tell me now even if my usually your employer tells me I want to transfer you to Soroti Really? <laughs> you start debating, you start negotiating your way out. Mm. He moved. Why would God believe? Why would Abraham, Abraham believe God? Yeah, and, and I want us to discuss real more on that. Uh, to say something about that, it was not the first time that God was like God was like Abraham knew about the God of heaven. Throughout the generations coming from Adam, then says Enoch, and all through, God always has people of His own. And we all have access to the knowledge and the dealings of God. Mm. The word of God created everything. Mm. Abraham had known about that. Now God comes to him and reveals him to him and tells him, I am the Lord thy God who made everything. Mm. So by the fact that God is creator, Adam has no doubt. Sorry, Abraham has no doubt. Mm. So even us, when God tells us, I am able to save you, I will do this. We have no doubt because we have record of scripture that mm-hmm. he has done that. Mm-hmm. So Abraham had a knowledge of the God of heaven, but the circumstances he was dwelling in were not permitting him. Like also we see the reason why God picks the children of Israel. They knew him but they had been born in captivity. So he picks them out and brings them to himself that they may worship him. Not that they were knowing him for the first time, mm-hmm. but they knew him. Then also something also came to mind. Many people say the law come came at the cross and all through but we see the law in many times at Noah's time for them to have been called sinners they transgressed we all see Joseph Joseph says i cannot with Potiphar's wife adultery i will have sinned against god so the principle is still the same we also see murder and death at the very beginning Abel and Cain so sabbath uh Exodus 16 about the manna so the law of god has always been in action and it has always lived and it is eternal so as we look at the priority of the promise i will allow us have a few words and in summary but what i want the viewers to take home is that god has promised to save us and that is the only assurance we have of salvation the law comes in to point to us the sin and when sin is pointed to we need to run back to the savior because it is him that can save us apul What would be the last words about priority of, of the promise to our viewers? Um, I want our viewers to remember um, that in heaven there is loyalty and royalty. Mm-hmm. And so God has promised us and his promise becomes superior to, 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 to the law because he wants us to be there. Amen. But for him to receive us He needs to prepare us for the circumstances in heaven. The, in heaven, the paradise in heaven of loyalty and real loyalty mm-hmm. and righteousness. Thank you. Hello. Thank you so much. Um, for me, I would conclude like priority of the promise. The Lord, the Lord's promise will always prevail. He's not man that he will lie. Amen. So if you've read a scripture today and there is a promise, you can claim it for yourself. If that um if it has some 
conditions. It has conditions. Fulfill. Fulfill the conditions mm-hmm. and you test your God and he will come to pass it. I like it when he said in Malachi, when he gave us the privilege to test him through our tithe and offering. Mm-hmm. So if you want to claim that promise of the blessing, you could go on and keep the condition. Thank you. Amen. The other aspect of our priority of a promise I'd like us to focus on is the experience of Abraham and his faith. Mm-hmm. And, and, and for me, that, that, that is the takeaway lesson from this. I know that the, the promise is priority. I know that the law is good and all that. But now is how do I match them? And I'm looking back to the faith of Abraham. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And I see in Genesis 15, 1 to 6, I see how God dealt with Abraham. He came and told him this. I see Abraham reasoning with God and telling him, but I don't have a son. How is it going to happen? I see God, uh, God listening to Abraham's requests. And That's all fine. that built his faith. So his experience with God. And what I'd like our viewers to take is build your experience with God. Sure. Yeah? And mm-hmm. like SP says, test him. Mm-hmm. And Apuli says, prepare yourself. Let God prepare you. Mm-hmm. Allow him to prepare you for that place where you're going. Because mm-hmm. if you smoke now, there's not going to be smoking in heaven. Mm-hmm. So sure. you had better get used to it now. If you cannot love your neighbor now, we are only all going to be loving in heaven. It's going to be difficult for you to love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you so much. The prince, God is love mm. and his character does not change. Sure. And if his character is love, everything that he does is for love. Mm. And it is love itself. So the promise of the Savior is love. Mm. The principles of how to live in this life and in life to come, all that is love. Mm. Lastly, I want to read Colossians 2 6, which says, As ye have therefore, sorry, as ye have therefore received, Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Mm. So as we have received the promise of the death of Christ, as we have received that his promise is above all we can do in our own lives, let us walk in him. And how do we walk in him? Him being the word and the word being the Bible. Let us walk as according to the word of God. Taking God at his word Mm. is real faith. And faith is what can connect us to tap into the blessings of the Lord. May God bless you. Thank you so much for participating in the lesson and to our viewers, let us hold fast that which we've learned and look forward to the coming of the Lord while we do all that he has enabled us to do to meet him. We'll close with a final prayer and I'll request Esther. Eh, Esther had prayed in the beginning? (laughs) Apuli should pray this time. (laughs) You are the bride. And you have us out man and so we are at the pulpit and you're asking us but shall we always be with you shall we in, in in poverty and in richness in health and in bad health shall we be with you and so father it's up to us to say yes we shall and say father we pray that let the viewers know that the lord is asking shall you accept the promise and live by the principles that will help us take our inheritance in the heavenly kingdom. Father, I pray that you help us too as we live by your word and live by your will. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.